Raider Nation, I want you to subscribe to Chat Sports because if you're looking for more NFL draft coverage, there's no better place to get it than Chat Sports. If you like shows like you're seeing right now, imagine this. We also do even more shows on our main Chat Sports channel. So the link is below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. And some of y'all might be sitting there being like, Mitch, why would I go ahead and subscribe to Chat Sports? Like, what makes you guys great? What makes us great? We've been the most watched NFL draft coverage three years in a row. And I am very proud to be able to say that. Plus, Tom and I and the rest of the team here, we're live for literally every single pick. We're live for like four. Hours in a three day stretch. It's absolutely incredible. We do games, prizes, interactions. If you guys want to actually come on our show, we give you that ability. There was a time last year where we had 60,000 live at one time. Like right now, there's 534 people watching. Imagine a show with 60,000 people live at one time. It gets crazy and it's 100% free. So please go ahead and subscribe to Chat Sports. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and we're going to be breaking down some news and some rumors here. The first thing that we're going to talk about is around the 2021 NFL Draft. And are the Raiders, are they going to go out and draft either an offensive tackle or an edge at pick number 17? I'm going to give this one three chalky heads, and I think that it's pretty likely. Now, in terms of offensive tackle, we know that that's a major need. Now, when you say edge, okay, the story here is actually from Peter Schrager. And he goes on to say that, like, hey, I could see the Raiders taking Micah Parsons. I could see the Raiders taking an edge. And a lot of you are going to be like, wait a minute, Mitch. Micah Parsons is a linebacker. You know what? You're kind of right there. But if the Raiders really use Micah Parsons the way that I've been saying for months here on the show, maybe Schrager's watching the Raiders report, you're going to use him as a linebacker, but you're also going to allow him to get after the quarterback and use his athletic ability. So the fact that they're either going to focus on OT or edge is something that I like. Now, there's a lot of other people out there like, wait a minute, man, we need a free safety. I don't want to watch the Raiders getting burnt every single game in the secondary. You are 100% right, but there are a lot of needs out there. And as far as I'm concerned, I just want the best player that I think can really help out the team right now. So here's the quote from Schrager on the Raiders draft plans. From what I'm told, the feeling around the league is the Raiders will focus on pass rush or offensive tackle with their first round pick. Now, is this like, quote, absolutely incredible? No, it's not the greatest one. But you know what? I can take it and I can run with it because that's exactly what the Raiders report is about. Finding the biggest articles, finding the biggest stories out there and giving my two cents on it. Now, here's some of the top offensive tackle prospects. The only player, players, I should say, that I could see the Raiders taking at pick 17. It's from Tevin Jenkins, Darasaw, Slater, and Penny Soul. Those are the only guys that I'd feel comfortable taking there at 17. And in terms of the most likely player, it's Tevin Jenkins. Now, if Slater and Penny somehow fall all the way to 17, we might go streaking through the quad with Cleveland, with Cleveland Furl. <laughs> I almost said, yeah, I did say Cleveland Furl. All right, let's go to the top edge rush prospects now, right? Because let's say this is the route they go. Jalen Phillips, Oziz Ojolari. Those are really the only two players I would feel comfortable taking at 17. But if I'm being honest here, I don't really want to go with any of these players. If I could have my pick, it's either going to be one of those off, uh, offensive tackles or I'm going to go with Jeremiah Wosukoromora or I'm going to go with Micah Parsons. Those are the players that I really want. Is Joke just an edge rusher? No, he's not. But can he at least give you some ability to get after the quarterback? Yes, he can. I mean, he had five and a half sacks two years ago. Sure, last season he didn't have as many. And then you got Micah Parsons. These are great, great defenders, and that's really why I think the Raiders could either go offensive tackle or edge rusher at pick number 17. So you know what I'm going to do this? I haven't done this in a while. I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's episode. So when you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to get hit with a YouTube ad break. So what I want every single person to do is go to the pinned comment. It's literally going to be the very, very first comment that you see on the video. And I want you to let me know. Who should the Raiders pick at number 17? All right, let's go to the next story here on the Raiders report. Is Damon Arnett going to go ahead and play slot cornerback? I'm going to give this one two chucky heads, and people are talking. Now, the reason why I'm even bringing this thing up here is because yesterday the Raiders went out and they signed Rasul Douglas, and if you didn't know that, Maybe you live underneath a rock. Maybe you don't have any internet. And then, you know, me telling you to subscribe doesn't do me any good. But here's the thing. I want you to subscribe to the Raiders report because when breaking news happens in the offseason, you need to know about it. And for you, if you're just coming across this video and you're like, why is Damon Arnett going to start, start in the slot? It's because 
the Rasul Douglas move, I do really think it impact this. So again, let's go back to Arnett here. Two Chucky heads starting, or at least playing in the slot. The fact that they signed Rasul Douglas to me says this. Gus Bradley wanted him. Douglas is a player that I know Bradley looks at and says, okay, we see what he did in Carolina. They ran a lot of cover three. He fits what the Raiders are trying to do this upcoming season. So now I could actually see Arnett being asked to play in the slot, not just because of Douglas, but also because of the fact that the Raiders want to go ahead and just build more depth there. I know John Gruden, I know this defense was hoping that Nevin Lawson could play in the slot a little bit. The fact that he's going to be suspended those first two weeks, I think this is going to give Arnett a little bit of an opportunity here. But when you go back and look, because I know some of you are going to be like, is Arnett capable of playing in the slot? I actually think he is. And I actually think he might be built more to be a slot cornerback at this point. Not that he's overly quick, but in Bradley's system, they're going to be looking for somebody that can be a little bit physical. I personally don't think that Arnett's ever going to be a starting reliable outside corner. So maybe you could shift him into the inside. Now here are his snaps in 2020. As you can see, only 15 in the slot. But... He has an opportunity here to jump over Amik Robertson or at least compete with Amik Robertson to be that starting nickel corner. And with the fact that Lawson's not there, that is a good opportunity for him. And if I'm the Raiders right now, I know I didn't bring in Douglas to play the nickel, and I really think having a guy like Douglas who can also then work with a guy like Isaiah Johnson who are both long and lanky corners – that gives the Raiders, and especially Bradley, the outside corners that he's looking for. Now, Douglas in 2020, this is how his snaps end up breaking down. He played as the outside corner 712 times. He lined up in the box 72 times, slot 31, and then he lined up near the defensive line on four occasions. So again, the Raiders saw somebody that they wanted. That's why they went out and got him, and he's going to play the outside. So what do you guys think here? Who's the better cornerback, Damon Arnett or Rasul Douglas. I want you to type DA for Damon Arnett, and I want you to type RD for Rasul Douglas. Now, if you want to be an overachiever and let me know in the comments why you decided to go that route, like me, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type my RD for Rasul Douglas because it's not so much who's the better overall player because they're actually, in my opinion, pretty close. I think Douglas is the better fit in the Bradley scheme. What does Bradley look for? Long, lanky, athletic corners. That's exactly what Douglas is. And really, when you go back and you look at their 2020 numbers, I don't want to just judge Arnett based on what he did as a rookie because that's not fair. However, I'm also going to go back and look at what, see what Douglas has done in the last four years, and I'm going to say chances are he's going to be better than what Bradley's trying to do, especially with that experience also last season playing in Carolina who also run a lot of cover three. Now, for Arnett, on the other hand, he's 24 years old. Obviously, was that first-round pick, so you're hoping that he can get some work. But if I'm him and I'm his camp, I'm like, okay, this is a good opportunity for me to show what I can do in the nickel because it's between him and Amik Robertson, in my personal opinion, for a week one starter. With no Nevin Lawson there and no other players at this moment that I am filming this video, I mean, to me, that tells me that John Gruden is at least confident in somebody that's going to go out there. And if it can be Arnett, that's a good opportunity. But you guys also know if you watch the Raiders report, that I'm a big fan of Amik Robertson, who was drafted in the fourth round last year, 137 overall. He didn't look all too good. He definitely looked like a rookie here and there. But I am going to give a lot of the younger players a pass, especially because 2020 was a insane year with everything you know that happened in terms of you know COVID and not really being able to practice. But here's the question, right? Because I know Raider Nation loves Amik Robertson. Who do you think would be the better nickel cornerback week one for the Las Vegas Raiders here, I want you to type AR for Amik Robertson or I want you to type DA for Damon Arnett. Now, we also got a little bit of an update here that the Raiders, uh, they got a guy, and I'm going to try to get his name the best I possibly can, Bleedy Ren Wilson. I've also heard that he's called BW Squared is his nickname. So he's 6'1", 190 pounds, 31-year-old from Connecticut. At least that's where he played college. Now, this is a player that had nine tackles last year, three interceptions, four pass breakups. He didn't play in a lot of snaps, and he is mainly a slot corner. He is visiting with the Raiders, and as I am filming this video right now, there hasn't been more information on it, but everything that I just talked about with Damon and everything I just talked about with Amik kind of goes back to this. The Raiders are still looking for a little bit more depth there at the nickel position. 
So I saw this crazy rumor, and as a reminder, when I do this show, I try to find news, I try to find rumors, and I really want to be able to give you guys my personal opinion on it because that's what this show is about, also educating. So Mike Mayock, is this going to be his last season? I'm going to give this one Chucky head. I'm going to say it's a very, very small shred of truth, but I saw an article out there from Fanside, and this one's from Brad Weiss, who said, Mayock could be gone with another subpar draft class. Gruden, this is where I say, isn't going anywhere just to due to the contract. Like, if you decide to move on from Gruden, you still got to pay him over $50 because, again, his contract is fully guaranteed. This is what I have to say, though, because I, I read the article, and you guys know how I stand on fan side. It's not, not that great of a site. But uh, they basically break down and say, okay, Mike Mayock, John Gruden, they have done a horrible job in the draft. That's kind of true. However, the only spot that I think the Raiders have done bad in is the first round. Now, sure, you need to be able to hit on your first round picks because when you don't, it's a big black guy. And when you go back and you look at the last two years of their first round picks, it has not been very good. Sure, they were able to find a few diamonds in the rough and, you know, a Hunter Renfro, a Max Crosby. But until you can hit those first round picks, that's when people are going to be really upset. The only reason why I didn't fully agree with this article is like, does the draft on Mayock, sure, but everyone that I talk to says that actually Gruden has a lot more influence on the first round picks. Mayock's the guy that does it a little bit later on. But also, I mean, if you're going to blame Mayock, you have to also blame Gruden because the trades, a lot of the moves that they made, they were a lot more of Gruden's decisions. Khalil Mack trade, going out and trading for Antonio Brown. They didn't have to do with Mayock, no. So I don't fully agree with it, but the only way he gets fired, and I mean the only way, is if it, this draft is as bad as last year and it's just an absolute disaster. Now, if you guys are watching us here, I appreciate you. If you could, go down and like the video. And remember, you are watching the Raiders Report by Chat Sports. We go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. So now what I'm about to get into here is a little bit of a mock draft reaction because a lot of times I'll talk about Todd McShay. I'll talk about Mel Kuyper Jr., well, they actually did a mock draft together, and they alternated picks, and they did it for the first three rounds. This is what the results that they came out with. Travon Merrick, safety from TCU, he went at pick 17. Kelvin Joseph, cornerback from Kentucky, went at 48. Spencer Brown, offensive tackle from University of Northern Iowa at 79. And then Levi Anzarike, defensive tackle from Washington. So what I'm curious is this. Go down in the comments right now, and I want you to grade this mock draft. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Let me know what you think about Mel. Let me know what you're thinking about Todd McShay because I'll tell you this. I get that those guys have the jobs that they do, but they have released, I'm going to say, five or six mock drafts this year where I look at it and I'm like, I don't really understand your thought process from top to bottom. So for me, I'm going to give this a C grade. I would not be very happy about this from top to bottom. Like, do I like Merrick at safety? Yes, I do. But I think a lot of us would agree that if you're going to go defensive player, I think you either go with a guy like Jeremiah will score more. You either go with a guy like Micah Parsons or the top tackle. Kelvin Joseph, that move doesn't make any sense to me. He is a player that he's talented, but he's got a lot of off the field issues. Spencer Brown is a new and up and coming tackle, but at pick 17, we need a right tackle right away. And Levi Anzarike, I mean, he's my second DT. But I think the only reason why you're seeing a lot of DTs go here is because we moved on from Mo Hurst. I wish they would have kept Mo, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Go down in the comments. Let me know. Grade this mock draft. 